This one's about almonds, almonds, almonds. One of my favorite type of nuts. Uh, we're going to start in Genesis 35. There's a lot of information here, so I'm going to go quick. But in Genesis 35, God told Jacob to go to Bethel. And that means, what? House of God. In the Hebrew, it's El Bethel, which means God, house of God. Which you could look at that and going, well, Jesus is God, so Jesus of the house of God, and he was born in Bethlehem. Okay? So he went there, and before he went, he told all his family and everybody who was with him to put away foreign gods. Okay? That's first and second commandment is, you know, God's a jealous God, and you'll have no other gods. And you'll not have carved or graven images. So he told them all to put away all these foreign gods, get rid of them, to purify yourself. And cleaning the body or cleaning the heart, cleaning the soul. I think all of the above. Then he says, change your garments. So purify yourselves and put on clean clothes. But that could also mean, like in uh, 1 Corinthians and Thessalonians, well, we're going to be put off, put off the incorruptible and put on the, um, or take off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible, or we will discard this body of flesh and sin and put in a glorified body. Because you put the new wine into new wineskins. Can't put the old wine into new wineskins. So, I see that as, okay, um, we're going to be purified, made clean and holy uh, by Jesus and the Word and the Holy Spirit. And then it says they're going to rise and go up to Bethel. Well, that sounds like a rapture. So I look at this and go, okay, put away foreign gods, repent, from being evil and sin, purify yourselves, meaning do righteousness and justice and mercy. You have your garments changed and you're gonna rise up. Just saying. But he went to Bethel. The old name, because it says in ch uh, chapter 35, verse 6, so Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel. So the name of the city was called Luz, L U Z, which means lights. Um, the ancient name for Lutz also meant almond tree. So, almond tree relates to Bethel, which relates to Bethlehem, which leads to Jesus. So, Jacob, so the name of the city was changed from Lutz to Bethel, and eventually Bethlehem. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Jacob means supplanter or overthrower. Supplanter means, okay, I'm going to take this plan out and I'm going to put a new one in. Or an overthrower is like, okay, we have our government, nation, whatever else, and somebody invades and takes it over and kicks you out, or oppresses you and changes your name, changes the flag, whatever. Um, and that's what Jacob's name means. And then his name was changed to Israel meaning may God prevail. So it was a supplanter, overthrow, change of a name. Gee, I think God's going to overthrow Satan and put a new Jerusalem. And what happens in the new Jerusalem? There's no sun. Why? Because God is the light of the world and the new Jerusalem. And where is that going to be put? Right on top of the old Jerusalem, it sounds like which was where the city of Lutz was, which was almonds. Go figure. So now we're going to go to Genesis 30, 37. Now, to be Shabbat is the new year of trees, which happens to fall on January 31st, which is the lunar eclipse. And Jesus said, you know, you wicked and evil generation you want a sign and so what sign did he show the sign of Jonah well what happened in the sign of Jonah um, there was a great earthquake and there a lunar eclipse so the Sun went dark and an earthquake 
Does that sound a lot like hmm, the ninth hour where there was three hours of darkness during the crucifixion and a great earthquake and the dead rise from the, their graves and went out um, teaching and preaching? That's in Matthew. Yeah. So in Genesis 30, 37, um, Jacob has these lambs from Levan's flock. And what do you do? He prepared himself rods of green poplar, the almond, and chestnut trees, peeled white stripes in them, and exposed the white which was in the rods. And the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters. Well, what's a gutter? It's like a manger, a feeding trough. Okay? And in the watering troughs, see, um, where the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. Now, we'll go back and dig into this a little bit. He took an almond tree. He stripped away the bark, or circ uncircumcised it, right? That's what circumcising is, peeling back the flesh, um, to expose the white stripes. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go into this. The almond tree being peeled back, circumcision of the heart. That's Romans 2, 28 and 29, and also Romans 3, 30. That um, says, For he is not a Jew which is outwardly, neither is that circumcision which, um, oh no, which is outward in the flesh. It's circumcision inside. It says, but he is a Jew, which is one outwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not of the letter, who praise is not of men, but of God. So, the Jews circumcise on, on the flesh to say, look, I'm a Jew, I'm different than the Gentiles. God's saying, um, it's your heart, it's your soul, where are you at, you know? Are you still covered in the darkness, or have you been peeled back and opened up to the Holy Spirit? So that's circumcision of the heart. The white stripes. Well, um, that's Isaiah 53.5, which God showed me 535 number and 131 number, and Joel 1.7 <coughs> um, about the white stripes. And 1 Peter 2.24, where we are healed by his stripes. Who, and this is Peter, right, 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his body on a tree, that's the cross, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. So, he paid the price, took the stripes on the cross, and we should live righteous and not sin anymore. So, um, in Romans 3.30, seeing it is one God that shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. So it's faith, like Abraham. He was not circumcised, but God told him to leave Ur, and he did. And it was accounted in righteousness, same with wanting to sacrifice Isaac on an altar. And God said, no, don't. I'll provide a, my own sacrifice. And there was a ram in the thicket. So, um, yeah. It's righteousness through faith, not by works. And justified by the blood of Christ. And he bestows this on us by mercy, grace, and forgiveness. But we have to turn from our evil ways. Um, the next part was the water troughs, you know, and I'm, this is just one paragraph. Well, the water troughs, that's where the flocks would come to drink. Now, in Luke 2.7 and 2.12 and 2.16, where was Jesus when he was born? He was put into a manger. That's what they called it, but I looked it up in the Hebrew, and it's a water trough. 
It's not a nice little basket with hay and everything else. You know, maybe they put hay in the water trough, but he was basically where they put the scraps of food or, or whatever else, the food that wasn't good enough for people to eat, they threw in the water trough and the animals would eat out of there. Or they put water in there and that's where they would get watered, the animals, the horses and the sheep and, and everything else. So our Lord was not born in a fancy crib or anything. It was a place to feed animals, which how appropriate is that? Because he feeds us through his word. That's the manger. Now the flocks drink, right? Well, in Genesis 29, 8, and 2 Samuel 23, 15, um, the 23, 15 is about, uh, and David longed and said, Oh, how that one would give me drink of water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Now, what is he saying here? He wants to drink the water of a well in Bethlehem? Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, you know, please give me the water, you know, from the well. And he said, but the water I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. This water, you'll be thirsty again. Um, so the flock is encouraged and nourished and grows by the water. The water is a word. And you read the word, and what happens? You get spiritually changed, and you see things differently. So, Genesis 29, which is really interesting, um, about feeding the flocks. They said, And we cannot until the flocks be gathered together, and till they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. Now, um, when, like in Mark 16.4, and looking up, they saw the great stone had been rolled back, for it was very great. Or Luke 24, 2, they had found the stone rolled away from the tomb. So, in Genesis, it talks about, well, we have to gather the flock together, which is the remnants of the body of the Christ, the bride, you know, um, they gather together. That's the rapture, right? But we can't do that until they roll the stone away from the well's mouth. Well, the stone was rolled away from the tomb and Jesus was resurrected. And then came the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, watering the sheep. What did Jesus say to Peter? Feed my sheep, water my sheep, take care of my sheep. Who's the sheep? The chosen ones. The ones God chose before the foundation of the world. So reading the word, you know, of the flocking, the flocks drinking, would be Ephesians 5.26 and John 4.14. 4, now, <clears throat> also, about the almonds, is... What happens? They drink the water and the lambs would conceive. <clears throat> that was the whole point. You know, he peeled back the almond bark to expose it, um, showing the stripes. And then they would conceive. Well, that's Revelations 12, 2 and 5. So when the... And it says in Revelations 2, 27... Uh, and he shall rule the, rule them with a rod of iron, as a vessel of a potter shall be broken into slivers, even as I have received from my father. Right? Who's going to rule? Jesus. Does he also grant that to us? Yeah, Revelation 2.26 says, And he that overcometh keep my words unto the end, to him I will give the power of the nations. 
Yep. So, and also in um, Revelations 12:2, right? She began. She being with child cried, travailed in birth and pain to be delivered. And then Revelations 12:5. And she brought forth a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for her that she would feed there for 1,230 days. So I, I first read this and thought, oh, so the woman is Israel because given birth to a male child, that's Jesus, right? And he was caught up to the throne because he had a resurrection. And yes, he's going to rule the, all the nations when he sets up his new kingdom in the new Jerusalem. Could it also be, because the woman is giving birth to a child, Israel gave birth to Christianity through Jesus Christ? Yeah. I also looked at it, could it be the remnant? Or is the woman? And she gives birth to the male child, which happens to be the tribulation saints. But she's taken to the wilderness and, and taken care of and kept away from Satan. That could be the remnant. So then we have the birth of the male child, and it says to, to, that you come to the, the water trough and drink. Well, in Revelations 22, 17, um, that's where it says, Whoever, behold, whoever is thirsty, you know, uh, come and drink. And it gives it freely. The, but it's the water of life. So, there's going to come a time, that says Amos 8, 11, where they're going to thirst for the word and not be able to find it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's going to be taken out? Because of the church is taken out? The remnant are taken out? Are they going to burn all the Bibles? It's going to be illegal to have one? Who knows? All I know is that it's going to get so bad that people are going to look for it and wish they could find God and His Word, and it's not there. So, and also in Amos 8, verse 1, what does it say? And behold, a summer basket of fruit was showed to him. He says, and Amos says, do what you know? What do you see? And Amos says, a basket of summer fruit, and, the, and says, yes, the end has come upon my people. Israel, and I will not pass by them anymore. So it's time for the fullness of the Gentiles to end, and then God's going to deal with with um, Israel. So <clears throat> you'll see in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, and also in John 4, 35 and 38, there's four months till the harvest. It says four months till the harvest, but the harvest is blooming and the fields are white. So he's, Jesus says the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Meaning there's a lot of souls that need to be saved, but he doesn't have enough people going out there and wanting to spread the word. And so he says the fields are white. Okay. And in Numbers 17 and 8, or Numbers 17, 8, um, what happened? And it happened the next day Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. The tabernacle of witness. Hmm. And behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi has budded and brought forth buds and has blossomed, bloomed blossoms and has yielded almonds. So the rod of Aaron talks about almond trees and blooming and yielding almonds. Well, that's to, to, to be Shabbat which is the new year of trees, which is happening January 21st. <coughs> and this is also the rod of Aaron, of the house of Levi. Um, they just did a dedication of the altar in Israel, and the Sadducees reestablished the um, priesthood of Aaron, that's, you know, of the house of Levi. So, Maybe that, what they did in Israel, also is pointing towards almonds and blossoming. So, um, also when you see this stuff happening, you're supposed to lift up your eyes because your redemption draws near. 
So in Mark 8.25, it says, Lift up your eyes and have your eyes restored so you can see clearly. And in Luke 21.28, it says, Lift up your head, your redemption is near. And in Joel 1.7, the branches were stripped bare and the white branches were shown. So it's all over the Old Testament and the New Testament, not only just almonds, but pointing to Jesus taking the stripes and getting beaten for us so we can go to heaven and be with him. If we choose to stop doing sin and evil and doing what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. And in Joel 1.14, it says, Gather together and make a sacred assembly and fast. Well, so there's this whole thing about the almond trees gathering, um, showing what Jesus did, uh, the water, the stripes, the circumcision, or peeling back the flesh and, and exposing the spirit, all of it. It all points to Jesus and what's coming. Um, he's almost here. It's time. Um, yeah, like Ephesians uh, 5.26. It says, That they may be sanctified and cleansed with the washing of the water of the Word. So the Word washes you. It's also considered water, in a sense. So, my suggestion, turn from evil, turn from sin, turn to God, get on your knees and tell Him, you know, first, admit, I'm a sinner, I've screwed up, I'm sorry. You know, believe. You know, Romans uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9, and part of 10, but it's like, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and He's your Savior and there's no other way to get to heaven because He is the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. There's also there's no other name given under heaven by which a man may be saved. He is the narrow gate. He is the door. Open the door to your heart and let Him in. And He'll change your life. He'll, he'll change your heart. He'll change your mind. You know, what you thought was important, which was money and and fame or greed or whatever, whatever you thought was important in this world, he shows you that it's going to get burned up. It's all going to go away. It's not forever. The only thing forever is hell and being punished and suffering or going to heaven and being with him in joy and happiness and love. No more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache, no more war. No more hungry, no more cold, no more problems. Oh, bills? <laughs> what bills? There are no bills in heaven. You don't have to pay anybody anything. The only thing you owe anybody is love. And how cool would that be? You know, every day is a good day. There's no issues, no drama, no pain, no heartache, no suffering. Just Everything you could think of that would be good, that's not evil or sinful, is there, waiting for you. All you have to do is accept what Jesus did. He died on the cross, he shed his blood, because that's the only way that you can be redeemed is by the shedding of innocent blood. He was an innocent man, and he died for you, died for me, to give us an opportunity to go to heaven. And um, you read Revelations chapters 21 and 22. It tells you, here's the new heaven, here's a new earth, here's a new Jerusalem. No more war. No more evil. And it says, the Holy Spirit says, come. And the bride says, come. And Jesus says, if you're thirsty, I have the water from the tree of life. I'll give it to you freely. Be an overcomer of this world. Turn away from this world and choose him. Love you guys.